I'm going to bring a message from Exodus chapter 20, verse 16 today called Hold Your Peace, if you're taking notes. And if you've heard this before, you got to help me preach it, all right? So um, don't be shy. This is a holler back church. That means when I holler, you holler back, right? All right. We're going to, it's a long scripture, so bear with me, Exodus 20 and verse 16. Hold your peace is the title of this message if you're taking notes. There it is. If you're ready, say I'm ready. All right, let's read together. Bear with me, uh, a lot of scripture here. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Amen, that's it, that's all, that's it. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. In this moment now, God, help us to focus, help us to be in tune, and I pray that every person in this room, including myself, would not walk out as we walked in, but different through your Holy Spirit. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. The reason that I wanted to talk about that today is because I feel that um, that's misconstrued sometimes. And when we're going through the Ten Commandments, we can read that and go, yeah, I've never done that. Which may be true. In Scripture, God is speaking directly to his people. And in Hebrew, they don't actually call these the commandments. They call them the ten words. Because the Lord said these are, the, it didn't say that these are the commandments. He says, and God spoke all these words. Some were commandments, some were principles, some were statements that God was making about himself and about his people. This is directly from the mouth of God. And he said, you shall not bear false witness. And what he meant was in court. In court, when you go to testify that something happens against you and your neighbor, you shouldn't testify falsely. And that's what God is saying. However, in the Hebrew, there is a specific phrase in here that we, that we have to understand that doesn't just talk about the law, but it talks about character assassination as well. So this is not just in court when we have our left hand or right hand on the Bible and our left hand raised and say, you know, I, I swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. This is in our daily lives and every moment that we breathe that God is asking us not to be false witnesses. God is asking us to be true, not only to ourselves, but to him because his word does not return void. So, of course, this, this commandment focuses on the legal aspect, but it also has to do with personal relationships. And so for just a moment today, if you would give me a little bit of your time, I wanted us to talk about community. Because we cannot be a good community and do what Pastor has been praying for, what Martine is talking about, if we are coming against each other. If we are bearing false witness against each other. Not just in court, but in church. If we come in on a Sunday morning and we say, bless God, you know, how you doing, brother and sister? And then on Monday or even Sunday during lunch, we're talking about that same person that we spoke with. And so this is boiling down to gossip. And so Ephesians chapter 4, 29 says it like this. I'll read it to you quickly. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear it. You know, moms would tell us if we have nothing good to say, we shouldn't say it. What the Lord is saying is, and through Paul to the Ephesian people, is if it's not building up, it's tearing down. If it's not uplifting, then it's bringing somebody down. And I wrote it down like this. It's wrong to save face ourselves by attacking someone else's character. And what is, but, but what does false witness mean? Because that's kind of a, an interesting phrase there. It means lying about a specific thing or person or speaking when we don't know the whole truth. What that's saying is that if we don't have all of the cards, we shouldn't speak. If we don't have any constructive, anything good to say, and I know that seems very practical, but it's deeper than that. Why? Because this affects our community. Can you imagine? We are the people of God. We're supposed to lift each other up, but if we come in here, whether it be Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Tuesday morning to pray, and we're tearing each other down, how can God work through us? We have to be people that are true to ourselves and true to God. And so again, like I said, it boils down to gossip. And so I want to, I want to give you an example through that phrase, hold your peace. Because I've done several weddings, and you know, a lot of the ministers here have. And there's a phrase in there that says, speak now or forever hold your peace. Now, some people take that phrase out because they're like, we don't want any come, nobody coming against this, right? Or anybody saying anything. Or any, you know, the freaks come out or something and they start going crazy. So they, they take that phrase out. It doesn't need to be in there today because what would happen, this was, I mean, this was hundreds of years ago, 
where the, the state and the nation was built around the church, whether it be in America or in Europe, they would say this because when you were engaged to someone, uh, let's say, for example, Daniel Boykin just got engaged to Gabby. Leo, shout out. He liked this, so he put a ring on it, right? It's great. Whenever you see him, just give him cash. Just give him cash, you know. But, but they would say this because when you were engaged to somebody, they would hold off for three Sundays. Their life was built around the church. So they would hold off for three. It would be three Sundays of silence when no one would know. You would keep it a secret, and it was almost like a game. You couldn't tell anybody because then they would announce it. And that day, they would have the wedding. So it wasn't like, you know, you wait a year. It's like, no, we got, this is a month away. Let's do this right now. Let's make it happen. And when they, they announced it, some people, of course, would have heard it for the first time now through Instagram and Facebook and, you know, WhatsApp. We hear about it like this. When Pastor mentioned it a few weeks ago. Something happens, and it, I mean, in seconds, it goes to the world. So they would only find out on the Sunday that the wedding was happening. So they'd go to church. It'd be announced, hey, so-and-so's wedding is this afternoon. Everybody would go to lunch and come back for the wedding. It was a community affair. And so then the pastor or the preacher would stand up as he's officiating the wedding, and he would say, if you have anything against this, speak now or forever hold your peace. Why? Because, again, it wasn't as, it was more communal, but it wasn't as open as it is today, and so you would know more things about people. Someone might be staying, standing up there to get married, and their other husband might be in the pews. That's what would happen. Uh, excuse me, that's my wife. That's what would happen. That's what would come out. This is the truth. And that's why they would do that. Oh, no, no, no. I saw them here and there with this person. And then they would say that. But after that moment, if they didn't say anything, and this was even law then, after that moment, if they didn't say anything legally, they had to keep their mouth shut to the grave. They had to, what we would say is hold their peace. So we get it from that phrase, if you have something to say, say your peace. Right? But they would have to hold their peace until they died. I would encourage us today, church, that if we don't have anything constructive, if we don't have anything from the present, but this is from 25, 35, 40 years ago, to say that we should hold our peace. Because Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, you've heard it before, a Thanksgiving uh, scripture. Be anxious for nothing but in everything. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We get to hold on to peace. Amen? So that's what I'm encouraging us to do today. We cannot bear false witness by saying our peace when we don't know the whole truth. That is gossip. Proverbs 18.26 says that gossip or a whisperer ruins close friendships. Loose lips. Sing ships. <laughs> now, I'm not just talking about what comes out of our mouth. What I'm saying is we have to be the same person that we talk to God like. We have to be that same person with everyone else. We have to bear that truth to witness. Why? Because that's what God is expecting of us. That's what God is asking us for his people so that we can be a healthy community. So that who we say we are, we are. So that when we speak, we don't use God's name in vain by living a different life than how we say you know, we come in on Sunday morning. I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just trying to encourage you today. Hey, you know, I'm blessing highly favored of the Lord. How you doing, brother? How you doing, sister? And then Monday, it's a whole other person. We don't come to church to be great. We come to church to be encouraged. And then Jesus shows us the way. We don't come in here and act different. Of course, we should be reverent to God's house. But this is who we are. We don't bear false witness when we leave. Somebody say amen. amen. We have to do it at all times. And so here's what I'll encourage us today. If we don't know the whole story about someone or something, let us keep our peace. Let us hold our peace. False witnessing usually comes from insecurity. When we're not comfortable with ourselves or grateful for what God has given to us. So we try to look for it. And all, I, I wrote it like this. And I, I, again, I don't mean to offend anyone tonight but, or today. But I wrote it like this. Some people are insecure about themselves that they need to bring others down to their level of pettiness so that they can be good. We must hold our peace. You know, I want, and I want to be very clear about it because even pastor said this. So I'm not, this is not something I'm, I'm declaring now just, uh, you know, out of myself. You know, people will come during our worship time and, and, and be free. People will come and, you know, they would, they'd lift their voice, they'd lift their hands. The Bible says all of these things. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Lift your hands in the sanctuary. Sing to the Lord a new song. The Bible says play skillfully and joyfully to the Lord. But 
sometimes, you know, we'll come to church and in a church like this, in a Pentecostal charismatic, charismatic church, we'll see some things happen and we're like, oh, what? That person's a freak. <laughs> What's going on that they have to do all of this? What's going on that they have to put on this show? But let me help us understand something. We cannot judge somebody's breakthrough until we've seen their been through. And so when we can't, we can't lift our hands and praise, and then somebody's doing something more extravagant than we are, and then we're judging them for what they're doing. No, we, we do not know what God's doing in their lives. We don't know what they're trying to praise off or praise on. And so my encouragement to us is let's not be false to people like that. Let's not see somebody praising God who God knows what they're dealing with. And then we leave the sanctuary and we're out there having coffee and we go, oh, did you see so-and-so? You know what God's saying? I saw so-and-so. I saw their worship. I saw that praise. I'm going to respond. I'm going to bless them because they're blessing me. So let me encourage you. If you're blessing God, keep blessing God. If you've got worship to give, worship God. Give your worship. He's not looking for a cute. He's looking for worship. Let's not be false witnesses. Let's hold our peace. What I love, and we're getting to Christmas time and into the Christmas production, and I love that, that verse in Isaiah chapter 9, where Isaiah prophesied about Jesus. He says, for unto us a son is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Yes. How can we hold our peace when someone says something about us on Facebook and then they're worshiping next to us in church because of Jesus? He himself gave us the example when he was on the cross and they were rebuking him. They mocked him with the King of the Jews. Little did they know what they were doing by proclaiming that over his life, that he is the King of the Jews. They put the crown of thorns on his head. They laid his hands out and crucified him and they were cursing him and they said, if, if you're the son of God, save yourself. Jesus didn't rebuke them because he could have very easily have. Come on, God split the Red Sea. He makes water come out of rocks. He makes the sun stand still. Our God is a powerful God. But Jesus stood up there and he didn't say, God, strike them down. He didn't say, God, give them wrath. He didn't say, God, destroy their homes. He said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Let me encourage you today. Sometimes we, we're false out of ignorance, but I want to encourage you today that in this room, in this moment, no, at the sound of my voice, none of us are ignorant anymore because we now know and we have heard that we should be true to ourselves and be true to God. So this is not just about what we say. This is about who we are. Let me, let me give, make a, a very quick distinction about worship and praise. Worship, or excuse me, praise is what we do. Praise is when we come in, like I just talked about, when we're worshiping God, we're glorifying God, we're, we're honoring God. Worship is how we live. Yes. You see, we don't just have a time of worship for 45 minutes in the service. No, we have a time to worship from the minute we get up to the minute we lay down. Why? Because that is our worship. A pleasing sacrifice unto God. That is our worship. So here's, here's what, I'll, what I'll encourage you with today. If we have something to say, Pray. So Ephesians chapter 4 tells us to, or Philippians chapter 4 tells us to do. Before, and, and Matthew chapter 18 talks about how to do this. And he says, you know, if you have an issue with a brother or sister, go to them. Amen. Talk about it. If you can't find a leader in the church, it doesn't say find another friend. Because that other friend is probably on your side and it's about to be a jump, not a talk, you know. <laughs> oh, come with me. Come with me. Let's get him. Let's get him. Because you know how that goes. It says get a leader in the church who is not only even keel, but is neutral to work it out. What, what God's saying is like, of course you got to do that, but before is, is to pray. If you haven't spoken to God about it, you shouldn't have spoken to anybody else about it. If the Lord hasn't heard it from our lips, he knows we're thinking it. Come on, he knows, he knows. But if he hasn't heard it from our lips, no one else should hear it either. Amen. He should know first. So here's my encouragement today. Before that confrontation, pray. But this is what the commandment is boiling down to. He says, you shall not bear false witness. But again, this is not just about court. This is about church. This is about community. This is about healthy community. 
So the, the Lord says, don't do that. Jesus says, do this, pray. Amen. When you pray, pray like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Amen. Bless God. And as soon as we, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you from experience, from, because I, you know, I, I need, I'm not okay too. I need it too. I'm wicked too. So, you know, just because we're up on this platform doesn't mean the pastors have it all together, you know? Like I had a bad day, hair, hair, bad hair day today, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's just one of those days, you know? We don't have it all together, right? My pants ripped right here, so now I have holes like the young kids, you know? I just, that's just what it is. But, but, that doesn't mean that, you know, we come and, and we can't go to God. No, he's not looking for our perfection. He's looking for our adoration. So we go to God. Next, is again, this is what Matthew is boiling down in, or Jesus is boiling down in Matthew chapter 18 from the commandment, go to that brother or sister. Amen. The last thing we should do is talk about that person to another person. The Bible says that destroys friendships in Proverbs 18 verse 26. It's got whispering, gossip. If we haven't spoken to that person, we, have not, we should not speak to anybody else about that person. Because that's, that's slander, and that's against the word of God. Right here in commandment number nine, word number nine. Let us go to that person. If it's not amicable and it's not great, get a leader from the church. So that's what Jesus says. Oh, I'm going to sue you. No, let's just have a conversation. Let's just talk. <laughs> yeah, because our emotions get all riled up, but that's what, that's what he's saying. He's like, hey, let's just, let's, let's talk about this. Let's go over this. Let's just have a moment. So that's what, that's what he's saying to us. And then we've, we've, got to, we, we've got to be real with God. Are we false witnesses? Are we who we say we are to God and to the community? When I say our community, I mean church. Because not everyone believes like we believe. Not everyone knows what we know, but we cannot plead, plead ignorance because we know. And if we didn't before, we know today. We must be true before God and true amongst ourselves so that we can see God's promises come to pass. We can see God's will in this church come to pass, but it will not happen with slander amongst one another. It will not happen with bickering, and it will not happen amongst gossip. In Jesus' name, it will happen if we hold our peace. And that peace is Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. He's the one that said, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and we should do the same. So at the sound of my voice, if, you, if you're needing to be real with God today, surrender your life to Jesus. If you've surrendered your life to Jesus and it's been a double life and you have a mask on, take it off. It may take us some time, but Jesus will take you just the way you are. And he loves you so much, way too much to leave you just that way. So today, let's be encouraged. Let's be encouraged, like Pastor said in the first service, to get the Absaloms out of our life. To be true before God. And to say, if we're going to be, if we're going to be preachers and we're going to be worship leaders and we're going to be ushers and we're going to be people of God, we're just going to come in and be part of the community that we have to be true. We have to be people of honesty. We have to be people of grace. We have to be, like Ephesians says, uplifters, spirit-filled grace givers in Jesus' name. So allow the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts today. Lord, we thank you for your word today. God, I pray you would change us from the inside out. Come on, church, pray with me. Lord, in Jesus' name, would you do what only you can do? God, I pray that right now at the sound of my voice, every person in this room that has not been filled with the Holy Spirit, that has not come to know you as a resurrection Savior, I pray they would feel that right now, God, so that we can be true to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us not to bear false witness, God, and to hold our peace just like Jesus held his peace. Lord, we pray that over our lives right now, God. We come against gossip. We come against bickering. We come against slander. Lord, we come against libel. In Jesus' name, help us to be a community who is pushing forward your kingdom and not our agenda, God. Help us to be people who are more in love with you than with saving face, that even though we may look bad asking for forgiveness, God, help us to be true and not be false witnesses. Can we all stand in this room today? I want to pray for several people. If you're in here today and you're saying, I want to be true to God. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Come, I want to pray for you. Come to the altar now. I want to pray for you. That's you. Let's not wait for your hand. Just come now. 
I'm ready to pray for you. If you're in this room and you're saying, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I want to be true to God through his power inside of me, come. We want to pray over you today. We have a team that wants to pray for you. And before we go, we cannot leave without giving you the opportunity. So if this is you, come now and we'll pray over you. Come now and we will pray for you. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. If there's no one, we'll pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for your encouragement, God. Help us to be peacemakers, grace givers, Lord, and not false witnesses. Help us to be true to you, Lord. God, help us, Lord, to not have anything bad to say or let us hold our peace, God. Let us bless and take care of the community that you have entrusted us with entrusted us with, Lord God, beyond the pastors, Lord, to even the congregants in this place, God, that we would take care of each other, that we would watch for one another, Lord God, that we would not put each other down, that we would not slander, Lord, that in Jesus' name we would see the promises that you've given to this church come to pass, that you've given to Pastor Boykin come to pass, Lord, I pray for health, I pray for provision, I pray for abundance, and I pray for mercy on your people, God, I pray bless us as we go, that in Jesus' name we can be witnesses, and that as Isaiah says, we can have beautiful feet to bring your good news, Lord. We thank you for this. Now bless your people as they go, Lord. And in our coming back, bless us in, in the same way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us. God bless you as you go.